Now, I think, I think everyone should be able to, well, most people, should be able to at least make a start on number one because we sort of started to talk about it. I'm going to multiply this fraction by another fraction. That'll help me because what's on the denominator is a third right now. I don't want it to be a third. But you can combine thirds to make things that aren't thirds, that are just normal numbers. Okay. Now, suggestion one, number one that I've heard already is the square root of 12. That could work. I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting, because I'm doing this to help you remember, because so many of you put your hands up. So I'm pointing out, you can multiply through by root 12 and root 12. Why do you have to have it on the top and the bottom? Why does that matter? Right. Yeah, so you're not actually changing this number, right? If all you did was multiply the bottom by root 12, you'll get rid of the irrational part, but it's a totally different number, right? You can't just multiply the bottom by something because you want to, so you do both, okay? However, I'm going to suggest there's a better choice than this, or at least a quicker one. There's something else I can multiply by that will turn this into not a third like it is right now. Can someone give me a suggestion? Anyone? 12? You mean like that? Yeah. So I've considered that option, <laughs> and I'm trying to think of a better one. That's cool, I get it warming up first day, that's okay. Daniel? Um, you, you simplify um, root 12 to um, two root 3. Okay, so this guy here, right? You can write him like this. Can you see why it's 2 root 3? Why is root 12 2 root 3? There's actually a couple of steps in between. What's missing? Oh, very good. Shh. I don't know if you heard that. I saw Nathan show it, right? Root 12 is root 4 times root 3. That gives you root 12, right? And root 4, you know what that is. It's not actually a third, even though it has a square root sign. Okay. So therefore, what I'm going to do, instead of multiplying by root 12 on root 12, I'm going to do root 3 on root 3. You see why? Do you see why? Now, does it make a difference? Well, this is the wonderful thing about mathematics. You can approach a single problem in lots of different ways. And if you do it right, they're all fine. You should get the same answer. But let's just have a look and see what happens. Why is this a better way? What do you get on the numerator? 10 root 3. 10 root 3, because that's all there is on the top, right? When you do root 12 times root 3, what happens to the numbers underneath? You get root what? 12 times 3, which is 36. The square root of 36 is 6. Okay. Now, you'll get this eventually if you multiply by root 12. You'll just get there after an extra line. You just have to simplify some more stuff. Can we do this any better? Are we done or can I do better? You can do better. I can do better, right? What would you like me to do? I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 2, which leaves you with 5 root 3 on 3. And now I'm done. Are you happy with that? Okay, this one's a bit trickier. Actually, it's a little bit outside what you guys are expected to know, but I thought you guys could handle it anyway, and you could. I've got to multiply with something trickier. It starts with a C, does anyone remember? Big, long word. Say it again. The conjugate, that's right. Okay, this thing down the bottom here, it's a mess. You can't multiply by root 2, because that'll make this not a third. But it turns this into a third, that's, that's gross, okay? So I'm going to multiply by this guy. Do you remember this guy? No. This is the conjugate. If you can't remember that it was called the conjugate, then draw a line to it and label it so that you have a mental tag for yourself that this is a special thing with a special name. Things only get names when they've got useful names to them. Conjugate. If you multiply by root 2 over root 2, you get rid of this third, but you make another one. This will become 3 root 2 plus 2. So you haven't rationalized at all. It's still irrational. What happens when you do that? When you multiply the top across, right? This is going to be 5 times that. What happens to the bottom? Do you remember? 
What's useful about these things? What's useful about these things? The plus and the minus, what do they remind you of? Do you remember this? Yeah, I think I heard it. This guy here is differences squares, right? If you expand it all out, you'll get a squared, take away b squared. No, 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 so this is difference of squares, right? Yeah, they're different to each other. Okay, so we learned that last year. So what's gonna happen here, if your a is three, what will a squared be? If your b is root two, what will your b squared be? There's my a squared minus b squared. Are you following with me? All that's left is to turn the bottom into seven. That's it, and, and you're done. Okay. Jump in, I'll write it for you just for the sake of it. Okay. Uh, you can write it as 15 minus 5 root 2, but you don't gain anything out of it. Remember what the question was. What was the question? Rationalize the denominator, you're done. It's rationalized. No, there's no gain.